Good evening, everybody. Welcome to Park University's League of Legends matchup. Here is joining me. Uh, I am Vince Payne, and uh, I'll be the co-host today. And another shoutcaster today is me, Shiloh Moore from Park IT. Um, so we're actually going to be getting here, beginning here in just a few moments. Uh, we're right now waiting for uh, one of the uh, other team members to join the match. Um, and then once they begin their champion pick is when we'll transition over. Um, so this is week three. Mm -hmm. And who are we versing up against? A Wisconsin Stout, I think. Yes, Wisconsin Stout. So, in the past uh, few two weeks, definitely seen Park grow and start to adapt more to their plays, and from the last game, they really started to brainstorm ideas on everything that they need to improve, and I think we'll, we'll see it here tonight. Yeah, I'll see the fruits of their efforts, for sure. Yeah. Now, you've been in the practices, mm -hmm. so do you, do you think things have definitely... I know they've definitely been working on improving their team synergy. I know there were some problems with it last week. And so they, they've been doing a lot better. Uh, they've, they've made a lot of growth in the last week. So, Awesome. All right. So we're definitely going to see, I think, an exciting match tonight. Um, we, we, we are trying to improve things with a little bit of like music and stuff like that, which we currently probably have the League of Legends login music playing. Um, but we'll be playing some of the royalty-free stuff from the League of Legends menu system. So uh, I think that'll go good. Um, hope you guys enjoy the stream. Uh, we'll transition over once they've officially started their uh, their picks. And so. uh, if you have any questions you want to have us answer, if you don't understand something, uh, feel free to ask in the chat, and we will try to do our best to answer those for you. Although there is a delay of about three and a half minutes, I think. So. Yep, that is correct. Alrighty, so see you guys back. Welcome back, everybody. We have entered the uh, picking and banning stage. So what's going to happen is both teams are going to ban and pick certain champions, try and ban out what they don't want their opponents to have and pick what they themselves want to have. So uh, coming out first, Park has banned Lucian, which is an ADC, uh, which usually goes to the bot lane. They're an attack damage carry. And that's that's a carry they probably don't want to play against. He's pretty strong in the current meta, so I can. that's a pretty good ban. And they banned Kha'Zix, who is a jungler that I know Park has run before. Which yeah. makes me sad. I, I love Kha'Zix. He's, he jumps around a lot, he, he fires things, he's a big bug. Yeah. You know, he just needs love, and he's not getting it tonight, and that makes me sad. Maybe we'll see in the next round. And then Park has banned Thresh, which is a, uh, it's a support ban, uh, which, speaking from personal experience, Thresh is really annoying to play against, and yeah. I believe that the Wisconsin... Uh, support plays a lot of Thresh yeah, from their they, match history. Yeah, they so. definitely do. Um, and I believe we also play a bit of Thresh, don't we? A little bit. Mm -hmm. uh, it's not one of our main supports, though, I think. Yeah. They the banned right? out Soraka, which is a support as well. Yeah, just a little, little girl then, right up there. No, the oh, Soraka's, no, Soraka's top right. Yeah, that's, yeah, that's right. That's Soraka. Yeah. And then on the left, they banned out Annie, which is a, probably a mid lane pick. I know our, our mid laner... So. Yeah, our mid laner has liked playing Zoe before. And then they banned out Jinx, which I know was a was a popular uh, ADC for Park. So that was definitely targeted at our ADC. Who is our, our main ADC? So our main ADC is, uh, his screen name is Zero Derps. Um, his real name is Nick Gresham. Although if you see him, call him Shotgun because it's his favorite thing Shotgun ever. Shotgun Nick, loves it. oh man. And so we, Park has picked up Malphite which is a tanky top laner, which I know that Park has some experience running with in the past. 
and they have picked Scion and Nunu. And so Nunu, I know, is a... I think that every single game in this league that Wisconsin has played, they have picked up Nunu for their jungle. Nunu has been a very strong champion ever since the beginning. Yeah. Since Nunu was released, which was, well, when the first, when the base game was just released. So, yeah, Nunu is still a force to be reckoned with, and I think still will from time to time. It's just a really well-balanced character. Yeah. And then Park picks up Nocturne and Leona. Um, Nocturne is a jungler that specializes in kind of those pick-off kills. Try and get somebody who's alone or low health. And yeah, then he, he's jump an to them. assassin. Yeah. yeah. He, he actually can jump from a really long range using his ultimate. And then Leona for the support. That's a kind of a tanky support. Likes to get in there and kind of make themselves the center of attention. And then Wisconsin has picked Morgana which is another support. Well, it, they can play support, they can play mid. Probably going to play it support. But uh, they have a lot of CC and lockdown. They're kind of a caster. They don't really like to be the center of attention like Leona does. Yeah, but you, if you leave her unchecked, she can totally destroy uh, anyone who tries to challenge her down there. Uh, she's usually a support character, yeah, for ball lane. Supporting their AD carry. And uh, if she snares you... Chances are you're done for. Um, yeah. Her snare lasts for a really long time. <laughs> All right. Looks like Park has banned out Yasuo, who I know is another uh, mid laner who can be very irritating. And they have... Wisconsin has banned out Ari and Silas. Silas is one of the new champions. He's kind of strong right now. And I think people are still trying to learn how to play him and learn how to play against him. So it's probably just... They just want to get that out of the air. Yeah, no, no, no weird characters today, yeah. although they're all really weird, let's be honest. And Ari was probably a targeted ban against our mid lane, because I know our mid lane uh, plays a lot of Ari, which our mid lane is the Corsair 01, who is played by Jake Watson. Yeah, and okay. Park has banned out Ezreal also, which Ezreal oh, is right. another strong... Uh, AD carry, although he's more of a hybrid carry. He kind of does a little bit of ability damage and attack damage. Yep, and then here again, we see Kai'Sa over at Wisconsin. Kai'Sa is just one of those really popular champions. Mm -hmm. um, I was actually surprised to not see it in the ban list. No, Kai'Sa has... Oh, never mind. Uh, Kai'Sa is, uh, is probably their ADC, going to go bottom lane. And the park team has picked up Jin. Is it Jin? Jin. Okay. J yeah. is not silent. Yeah. Jin is a uh, is kind of a peculiar ADC in that he kind of only gets four shots and then he has to go back and reload. So, uh, as opposed to other ADCs which can attack indefinitely. So, he's kind of peculiar to play around. You have to have a team that really works well with him, which I think Park has. They have a lot of initiation and a lot of ways to draw attention away from the Jin while he kind of does his thing. And a Xerath is coming out as well, which is probably for the mid lane if I had to guess. Xerath is what's called an artillery mage, where he specializes in long range magic damage. And, and they also did a Lissandra yeah, for over at Wisconsin. Lissandra is more of a tanky champion, although she is also still a caster. So, and that's probably Wisconsin's mid lane. So, this should definitely be an interesting match for sure. Yeah. And, and honestly, you never really know where the match is going to go until it's a little bit too late. Yeah. <laughs> to where you think, like, ah, oh, this is going to be the perfect matchup. And then it turns out it wasn't quite the perfect matchup that you, that you really hoped for. So this is definitely going to be an interesting game. Uh, they're right now in the middle of choosing out their loadouts, like their masteries and such, to give them a little bit of an edge. Um, and that's what both sides are doing right now. So we're eventually going to get in game. We're going to be set on a two-minute delay. So uh, we probably will be, yeah, here we go, waiting for spectator delay. So we will be right back with you well, in 2 minutes and 50 seconds. Is there anything you want to add, Vince? Well, uh, just real quick, uh, I know we've introduced some of the uh, some of the people on Park's team, some of the athletes, but uh, I'm going to introduce the rest of them here real quick. Oh, yeah, go ahead, man. So our top lane, with the screen name of Death Come to You, uh, is played by our Laura Passler. Our jungler, who goes by the name Bone Dog one is Johnny Carrasco, and our support, who has the name Macarena, is played by Corinne Bublitz. So, 
Yeah. Uh, all right. Well, we are waiting for the delay, so there will be a short uh, break, and we'll be right back. Oh, this. Oh, I thought I clicked. Well, we've just loaded in. 
So, Park will be playing from the blue side today in Wisconsin, or for this game, I should say. And Wisconsin will be playing from the red side. So, uh, for those of you who don't know anything about League of Legends, uh, short uh, explanation. Two teams of five will contest uh, on, the, on the map. They will fight over their nexuses, so or nexi. So the blue team will try and destroy the red nexus, and the red team will try and destroy the blue nexus, and it looks like Park is going through the river for some early aggression, potentially. Scion zoning out the Nocturne. Yeah, it was good. It was good for Nocturne to back off there and could have been caught by that Scion's. Uh, what is that? Is E or W? That's his Q. Oh, it's Q. Mm -hmm. uh, One of the things Nocturne can do is uh, with a long. If he holds it for a really long time, anything that's caught underneath it can be knocked up into the air and take a lot of damage. So, uh, to continue the explanation of the game here, there are three lanes, each of which has three turrets and an inhibitor along its path as the minions march down those lanes. And uh, in the early game, uh, each team will try and get rid of towers and clear minion waves and so on to get map control to kind of push up into the opponent's nexus. You want to explain, Alan, what's going on here? Why are they taking a big red giant force creature? So this uh, that red guy right there. He uh, when you kill him, the guy who kills him gets a buff that increases your health and mana regen, I think, and uh, it gives you a little bit more damage. Sorry, not mana regen. It gives you health regen and it increases your damage. And that's really important for that jungler to have because he needs that in order to clear the camps inside the jungle. The jungler will usually go, instead of going down a lane and fighting uh, other champions and minions for a golden experience, will instead fight monsters in the jungle and try and kind of be moving around on the map so that way they can be, uh, they can uh, gank effectively for their teams and, and roam around. Oh, and Yona getting hit by that snare like I mentioned earlier. Very, very brutal once Morgana gets you uh, snared up. Yep, and first blood goes to Wisconsin. All right, hold on. I, I really need to see this right here. What is this skin? What? She's got a sausage? Yeah, that's a uh, that's barbecue, she... Leona. Oh, oh. And the Nocturne up here ganking the top lane, going for that Scion. Ooh, almost and getting him. I think the Nocturne's probably going to... The smart play here would be to hang around and try and get him in a few seconds. Yeah, make, make him think that he's fully left and then come back and ambush once more. Yeah. Secure that kill. Because it doesn't look like the Scion. Scion's actually Scion's... continuing the pursuit. Yeah, he's running through the jungle, uh, running through the river here. Oh. He's probably he going to contest the scuttle here. Yeah. Uh-oh. As the Nunu comes down with the snowball. Ooh. Zara trying to help as best as he can. Knocked her in there with the flash. It's a 3v2 right now. Not looking good for Zerath as oh, he flash flashes over the wall. Good nice move, good play. flash. All right, that was actually a really nice escape because losing that fight would have been. Whew, would have oh, been, yeah, would have been bad been. for the early game. Uh, so each, as Nunu and Scion, this is already an action-packed game so far. I know they're cutting you off a lot. They're <laughs> running through the jungle trying to chase after that malphite. Might be just a little too tanky. Both flashes coming out, and the Nocturne. Ooh, just barely getting away using with that bomb. blast cone. Nice. Yeah, so those little blast cones are really, really helpful as they're uh, they're around on each side of the jungle here, usually adjacent from uh, from the other side. And you can use it to blow yourself up to uh, anywhere. You'll you'll see an icon when you hover your mouse over it, but you currently can't see that. So what were you trying to explain before? I, I got I, cut off I, I by I all forgot, the action. I forgot what I was saying. Oh, and Leona dives in here. Oh, flashes away. So, at the beginning of the match, you can select two summoner spells. One of which, which is almost universally picked, is called Flash, which has a five-minute cooldown but allows you to teleport a short distance. And it can be really crucial in getting away or in securing a kill for yourself. And so, in order to... Uh, it, it's really, if you can burn those flashes on, and Jin just barely gets away there. But if you can burn those flashes, 
then that means you have the mobility advantage for about five minutes. So, Perk burned a lot of flashes there. So that's not the greatest thing, but everyone is still alive. So that that's the important thing right there. Um, so, uh, kind of continuing my explanation from earlier. So, one of the basic components of League of Legends is you try to get, try to farm, you try and get golden experience early on in order to basically power up your character. If you notice next to everybody's health bar, you'll see a number. So everybody right now is level four in the bot lane. And that's their current level. The higher level they are, the more health they have, the more mana they have, and the higher skill, higher skill level their abilities are. So as they level up, they can put ranks into their skills to make them more powerful. The goal is, is to try and give yourself a gold and experience advantage. Gold is gotten by getting the last kit, last hit on champions or oh, minions. Oh, Morgana is hitting that snare again. I didn't think she was uh, going to get a chin off guard, uh, but she, she really went for it and actually re rewarded her there. Yeah. It's kind of dangerous to push uh, poke in her tower like that, but it paid off in the end there. That's why it's always a good idea to stay behind your tower anytime you're going to be doing a recall. Yeah. Um, being in front of the tower, sure, if you think you're safe, but like that Jin thought, Jin thought he was safe, and well, Morgana's got, uh, got, got a little bit of range. Grit. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> she's going to go in there. Uh, and I'm, I'm loving that skin that Leona has. Just, you know, taking down minions with a sausage and a grill the shield. It's just, that's great. Uh, yeah, so those turrets that you see in each lane early on, uh, you do not want to be underneath them if you're on the wrong side, because you're just too weak to be able to handle those. But as you level up, then fighting under them becomes a little bit easier, especially if you have minions with you. Uh, the poor Scuttlebug is going to get taken out there and provide in some uh, health and speed boost for them. As yeah. Gets in position. So that little green crab that they just killed there, um, when you kill it, when you get the last hit on it, it goes into the center of the river and gives you vision of the center of the river, and whenever you pass by the ward, you get movement speed, which they're going to use to try and catch out that Nocturne as uh, Nocturne goes down. And picking up that kill, and it was just a matter of just wandering on over to see what's happening. And now they're going to steal the blue buff. So they're called blue and red buff, respectively. The red one we already explained, but the blue one gives you mana regen and increases your, uh, sorry, decreases the cooldown of your abilities. Whenever you use an ability, it has a cooldown, usually somewhere anywhere between like 2 to 3 seconds or up as high as like 300 seconds, depending on the strength of the ability. And so that blue buff can be used to kind of reduce the mana costs and uh, allow us to come off cooldown a little bit faster. Okay, some nice hits there. It's probably going to force the Sandra to go back, actually. Oh, nope, as Jin goes down once again. Yeah, it was due to that shield. Kinda. Yeah, that Morgana is really getting some work done out there. But uh, in the mid lane, I know in particular, it's a really big. Oh, that. Oh. Ah, she just rolled to save yeah. herself. The camera just kind of cut over. It's in an automated directed mode, so it tries to go whatever the action is. But uh, yeah, it does cut off sometimes. It's not perfect. But the the uh, the thing with mid lane is a lot of fighting over mid lane is trying to force your opponent to go back before you do, so that way you have control over that minion wave and an XP and gold at the lead. Then, it looks like they're gonna try to take dragon here. Yeah, this dragon in particular is called an infernal dragon, and when you kill it, you get a damage boost on your all of your abilities and your attacks. So they managed to take that uncontested. There wasn't really any way to stop them. So yeah, increasing uh, attack damage, percentage, and ability power as well. So, uh, as I was mentioning earlier, uh, killing things is the way to get experience and gold, basically. And when you have those, that gold, you can use that to buy items. And different items give your character different things. They can give you health, they can give you attack damage, they can give you ability damage, they can give you health regen, they can give you all kinds of different stats. And depending on how you build your character, you can use it to fit into your team in different ways, into your team composition. 
And the new new rolled in with the snowball here, forcing out the flash from the Leona. But otherwise, and the root from the Morgana there was dodged, fortunately. But basically, you level up your, your character, you build items on them, and then you become, you try and have, be more powerful, essentially, than your opponent is. And you can use that advantage to kind of force your way down Ooh, the lanes. Nocturne. And Nocturne coming in there with a stun from the Leona and the Jin ultimate there. Going to use a stopwatch to prevent herself from taking any damage. And then there was a trade there. Yeah, Nunu uh, was able to actually get the kill on Nocturne. And then uh, Morgana was able to actually also pick it up for Leona. Um, of course, the directed camera. Beautiful piece of technology <laughs> that it wants to cut off from a lot of things here. So we're actually just going to use the mouse for a lot of things here now. All right. So, uh, looks like the Jin, they tried to get a gank on the Jin there. Weren't really able to get much done with that. As the Scion here, looks like he was bullied out, trying to get a, get away. As Kaisa gets a kill on the Jin there, it looks like. Yep, so it's a lot of, um, kind of... Things are a lot slower than they were in the very beginning of the game. The beginning yeah. of the game is all about trying to get those early kills, which will put the enemy team at a much significant uh, disadvantage. Um, and right now, it's all about uh, seeing on who can get some uh, some more kills, and then finally being able to take down the first uh, tower line of defense there. Now, another thing that is important to note, in the, especially in the early game, is these numbers next to the uh, champion icons here. That's the number of uh, CS they have. That's the, that's the creep score. That's the number of minion kills they have gotten. Nunu coming in with a snowball. They both went in different directions, it looked like. Yeah, kind of disengaging from each other, which is both kind of a good thing, in my opinion, because it didn't look like uh, if Nunu was able to land that snowball, it would have been it would have been nasty. I think it would have been, been lost there. Yeah. Uh, Malphi just... Having a nice little 1v1 match here with Scion, and Nocturne's gonna come in and help. Malphite using his ulti to kind of bounce him up into the air, and... Hey, it's gonna Malphite. be close, it's gonna come be close. Uh, well, they did Probably. get the Scion in the end. At least we got the Scion. Oh, oh and Nunu comes in with the flash right there on the Nunu. Oh, that snowball. Unfortunately, managed to get the return kill on the Nocturne. So we saw a Scion die. And then he came back. That was his ultimate or his passive. That's his passive. Yeah. yeah. So basically, Scion, whenever he dies, he comes back for a short period of time and kind of goes into a Berserker Rage. Yeah, if and you think a big muscly dude coming back from the dead after you just killed him just to come back and strangle you is terrifying, well, you should be terrified because that is terrifying. That is terrifying. I'm going to see that in my dreams tonight. Scion is the juggernaut, after all. And so the notification you just saw with the turret plating falling soon. The, the turret plating falling soon. Um, so if you notice, oh, the Scion oh, ultimate man. going in there chasing after the Xerath. The unit absolutely coming in to face off with the Xerath, but then he just, he didn't really do much. He just yeah, kind he of was, said hello. He How was too you? close to the tower. The Xerath uh, still had time to run away, unfortunately, for them. Uh, and it looks like the Scion is now making his way up to the top there, but we have a lot of activity in bot lane. Yeah. Uh, three of Wisconsin's champions are down there. And like the Nunu is looking, I think, looking for a setup on the Nocturne here. Is, oh, they're trying to set up around the dragon. The dragon is just now respawning. Looks like an Earth type kind the, of. Dragon. That's the Rock Drake. Oh, and that, Rock Drake. <laughs> yeah. Or the Mountain Drake, I think is what it's also called. Alright, that sounds cool. Mountain Drake. We'll, we'll go with the Mountain. And there's looks like there's going to be something like kind of a fight setting up down here. Uh, they're taking out some of the wards to make sure that uh, Park cannot see what uh, what they're doing. Although Nocturne uh, already is aware of what they're trying to do, so we'll see if they can try to get a team fight together. But I don't think they'll be able to steal this one. There's well, the Nocturne may want to dive in and try and get that smite on it potentially. Might. Oh. But it didn't yeah. didn't didn't want to go in there. Unable it wasn't worth to steal it. it. And honestly, I don't think it would have been worth it. Uh, and the Jin no, ultimate didn't. coming in. Oh, yep. As Nunu runs in. To push him back. And the Leona stun. But unfortunately, 
Oh, yes. Zareth going there with his ultimate, trying to get that Kai'Sa pick off, but yeah. unfortunately wasn't able to find it. Organa was just a little bit too close and decided to get it stopped. So, all right. And they're gathering up here in the mid lane. They might be trying to push in and take this tower, potentially. Um, they do have a significant gold advantage, about 8,000. And looks like Park's trying to defend it here. Now, it's interesting to point out, though, that we're 15 minutes and 30 seconds in, or 40 seconds, mm -hmm. and um, we they haven't gotten rid of the first towers yet. It's yeah. usually already happened by now, I well, think. Well, the, uh, the turret plating lasts for 12 minutes, which gives oh, the okay. turret significantly higher armor, oh, which is okay. what I was mentioning earlier. Now, you do get gold if for every 20% of the tower's health you take away. And the... Are they taking the Herald? Yeah, it looks like the Scion and the Nunu are trying to take the Herald, which the Herald is one of the most important mid-game objectives you can take, really. It spawns between 10 and 20 minutes. Yep. And gives you a giant bug, basically, that can really help you push a lane in. So it looks like the Scion's going to go up top to use that. As uh, Morgana here is de-warding. Wards are an item you can place in League that gives you vision of a certain area. There's two types of them. There's... Well, there's actually three types of them. Yep. There's, uh, there's the uh, normal invisible ward, or stealth ward. That lasts for a short period of time. Now fight jumping in on the Scion there. Scion's got his shield up though. Oh. Oh. Just barely getting away. <laughs> yeah, just being able to barely get away. But Nocturne, I see him coming up there on the mini map. Uh alright. Yeah, he decided to back off. Probably not not a good idea to dive in quite yet. Fiona coming in there to snag onto the Morgana. Try to do some damage there, take out their their high kill support. You know, it's funny, usually the support's not the one getting the kills. You're trying to give that to your mm -hmm. EV carry, but Morgana is just, just With Nocturne running in on the Scion, but the Nunu has his has his back. Oh yeah, no, dude, really yeah, you can get away from the giant snowball. That's yeah. that's nothing you want to mess with right now. Exactly. Alright, so in terms of so, so there is one side of the game that we haven't really talked about. We haven't really talked about it in the previous uh, two weeks, and that is items. Yeah, so if you look here on the bottom of the screen, on the scoreboard here, you can see items that each champion has. Uh, the different kinds of items give different kinds of buffs. So these, or they're consumable items, as uh, these control wards that the Morgana and Melisandre have. They are one of the ward types, and they last permanently until they're killed, although you can only have one out at a time, and they can detect other wards. And they are really important uh, to have out on the map, and uh, especially just to control the opponent's vision, because if they have stealth wards somewhere, you can't see them without a control ward. Uh, or having a special item that allows you to scan around you. I'm going to try something here real quick. Uh, okay, cool. I can't control with keep Sorry, I just wanted to mess with that for a moment. <laughs> Oh, Just looks like see. they're going here on the Scion to try and stop that Scion in the Rift oh, Herald. That's where the Rift Herald is. Oh, that Scion is beefy. He has become the absolute unit juggernaut, man. Yeah, he, that's, his main role is to kind of be that of a bruiser, where he doesn't do as much damage, although he does do damage. Um, his main goal is to just kind of be in everybody's face. Oh, that's a good flash by Shin there. Yeah. Looks like we do have some, uh, some competition over in uh, mid lane with the Zeraf and Morgana. I'm trying to get over there. There we go. Oh, is the mat? Oh, wrong mouse. <laughs> All right. And they keep trying to get this Scion here, but he just will not go away. Uh, he is three levels up on both the Jin and the Leona. Alrighty, so Park is definitely feeling the pressure right now as they're really pushing in through each tower level. Uh, so bot tower, where it's on its final one before it hits the inhibitor. Top tower is also uh, just holding at the inhibitor. And then mid tower, I think it's just barely holding on right now. Or is that, did it just go down? That Scion uses his ultimate to get away there. His ultimate allows him to run really fast, basically. Run charge. really fast. Allows him to have a charge, and he deals damage at the end of the charge if he hits anybody. And he can't really turn while he charges, but he can charge a really long way. 
at Morgana here getting caught out but using that uh, one of her items uh, which is called a uh, it's either the stopwatch or it's the Zanya's Zanya's. Yeah. so the Zanya's hourglass uh, allows you one of the things you can do with it is you can use it to stop yourself from taking damage but you can't move or take any kind of actions for a short period of time. So it's really good to kind of hold off somebody attacking you just for a few seconds. And oh, and Scion did his teleport uh, somewhere to get right in on the action, it seems, against a three champion. Yeah, and just shut him down. Yeah. And now they're trying to basically get away from him while he's losing all of his health. When he dies, he comes back, but he also loses health at a very rapid pace. I mean, you are a rotting and, corpse at that point, so... Yeah. I hope you should go down soon. <laughs> Wisconsin there, you can see the pings coming out. They're trying to set up around the Baron pit, it looks like. So this guy right here, his name is Baron the Shore. And if you kill him, your whole team gets a buff that lasts until you die, or at least a couple of minutes after it. Whichever comes first. Baron's looking really good. Is it because of the New Year's... Uh... Yeah, they have a New Year's event. Uh, sorry, a Chinese New Year uh, event going on right now. Oh, it looks awesome. But if you kill him, he's one of the, he's the, one of the toughest uh, monsters to kill in the game. Oh, but if Wisconsin. you kill him, and the trying to chase the Nocturne there. Yeah, Nocturne was trying to get a bit of that blue to help him out, and looks like uh, they, they caught wind of it via their ward, I think. Yes, yeah, they had a ward, they had a ward right, right here. there. Man, wards. So, if you can get that information out there, you use it extensively. And then you must also, at the same time, be taking out the enemy team ward. Yeah. So if you look here, you can see like this dude has a lot of health. He's really hard to take down. Um, but the thing is, if you kill him, he gives your whole team a buff that increases your damage, uh, allows you to recall faster, and also gives your whenever you stand next to one of your allied minions, they'll give him a buff. So you'll see here, uh, or you'll see here soon, uh, when you stand next to the, your min their their minions, they will get a, will kind of get purple stuff around their weapons and get a buff as they jump there on the Nocturne. And Scion there is aggressive, is positioning very aggressively. Yeah, trying to take all the damage while he allows his teammates to then take on the tower and melt it down. It looks like they're going to take mid inhibitor here. So the inhibitor, once you destroy the inhibitor, it allows you to create uh, super minions, which do extra damage and have a lot more health and are really hard to take down. So, so they're going to back off here, kind of take their time. Yeah, probably going to go through jungle, take on some uh, either more red or uh, blue uh, stone creatures. Yeah, they're going to try and uh, force Park to stay in their base. And basically it's a tower defense game at this point. They have to hold out until their inhibitor respawns, have to wait to get more items, try and do whatever they can and just hold on here. And then the fight should be a lot easier after that point because those super minions are, yeah, they're nothing to scoff at. Yeah. We'll see them uh, arrive here in actually the mid lane here in just a moment. Yeah, if you look here on the mini-map in the bottom right corner you'll see these giant red dots and those are the super minions. But looks like the Malphite here oh. is trying to get up in the middle of everybody's business. Just flashes out and they catch the Xerath out while he's doing his ultimate. His ultimate allows him to you know, throw magical energy out. A really long range, but he is immobile while he does so. Right, making you very, very vulnerable for someone just to walk up and say, Hello, how are you doing today? Mm -hmm. Oh, doing great. Yeah, and you're dead. Yeah. And the Jin there tried to use his ultimate to zone off the Scion. Didn't really have enough damage for it, though. The Wisconsin team has a lot more items. Oh, and there's the super minion. Just taking in that uh, that turret damage and just has a ton of health. Oh, there's two of them. Leona now. jumping in, trying to get her ultimate off, isn't really able to. Malphite jumping in there also goes down. Jin really can't do much by himself, oh. and he gets picked off as he runs away. Kaisa in with the triple kill. And there goes the final uh, tower. Or Yeah, both towers are down. Kaisa now with a quadra and a penta. And, a penta. and just to finish it off there, there goes our first round. And... Yeah, we're going to now take a 10 minute break from here and we'll leave you in with some music and a new video that I put up there. And then we'll be back in that 10 minutes for the next set of picks and bands.
we will see you guys all very soon. And if you have any questions, uh, feel free to ask them in the, in the chat. Yep, we will answer them as best as we can. We are on a bit of a delay uh, in terms of the stream itself, but uh, we'll try to answer them uh, either by voice comm or at the least in chat. Thank you guys.
Alrighty, everybody. So, we are back, and now we're in the picking phase, or banning phase, actually, is what I should be saying. Alright, so, Park here is now on the red side, and they have banned out Nunu and Thresh. So, I know Thresh is a, just a common support ban, they just really don't want to deal with it. And they banned the Nunu because I think they didn't really uh, respect the Nunu in the previous games. So you know, Yeah, you always got to respect Nunu. Nunu yeah. is... She's terrifying. <laughs> we'll yeah. just put it that way. And the and Wisconsin banned. has the Kha'Zix and the Jinx ban and has now followed up with Soraka ban. Yep. And yeah. a Morgana ban from Park <laughs> as well. Not too surprising there. I wonder if there'll be a, a Kaisa ban. As well, Kaisa. Um, maybe. Yeah, we didn't really see much play from Kaisa until the very end. With that pentakill, mm -hmm. was almost like a finale thing. But other than that, I don't think Kaisa really. You know, Kaisa is one of those one huge those, plays. Kaisa is kind of a snowball champion. So, yeah. So, so she. Oh. I don't think she's particularly strong in her own right. It's just knowing her kit and understanding how she works. All right. So Wisconsin here has the Warwick pick. Warwick's a jungler typically, although he has. Oh, I forgot. Uh, the summoner spells aren't finalized here. Right, so probably going to be switching up with somebody. So so in terms of summoner spells, if you see somebody with Smite, which is this guy holding kind of like a lightning bolt over here on the right uh, by Kindred or Bone Dog one um, that generally gives you an idea that this person is primarily a jungler. But things can switch around as you're trying to play with the enemy's mind on who's playing who. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, it's, it's all a mind game at this point. Yeah. So they have the Warwick with constant one with constant as well as a Braum and a Lucian pick. So Lucian was kind of like what we talked about. He's kind of a meta pick. He when we say he's a meta pick, it means he's very popular with the way that the game currently is. Yep. And Braum, who's a very defensive support, but he can get a lot done because you know he's he's very tanky and he's got can a kinda, lot of utility. Yeah, he's got yeah. a lot of utility. And Park here has uh, a uh, Mal Malkai. Yeah, Malkai. And he's probably going to go in the top lane. He's also kind of junk, uh, kind of tanky, uh, similar to uh, Malphite from last game, uh, but a little bit different kit. And then they have a Kindred and a Leona pickup as well. So Leona like last game, uh, and a Kindred. Kindred's a kind of a peculiar champion. Yeah, I haven't. Yeah. I was going through uh, some of Kindred's abilities, and they're kind of terrifying, as well as they're, if you actually looked at the character backgrounds and mm -hmm. everything. Basically has a, a ghost yeah. wolf dog thing, which is probably the coolest thing you could ever have as a best friend. Um, and Kindred has some very, very powerful abilities, but where do you see Kindred usually play? Um, he's usually in the jungle, uh, usually from what I've seen. Yeah. So, um, that's probably going to be where they're going to use him and getting an Ezreal, Ezreal for Park. I know uh, I know Nick plays a pretty good Ezreal. I've seen it in action. So very nice. That's going to be really exciting to see. And I noticed that they pick Lucian, and we did ban him last game. So yeah. I think they used their first bans on getting rid of the Nunu and the Thresh, and they weren't really able to get rid of the Lucian like they want, like they would have liked. And. Wisconsin has banned out Ari and Silas, while Park has banned out Scion. And very, very common indeed. And yeah, uh, yeah. they just don't really want to deal with uh, those mid laners right now. And so Wisconsin cool. picks up Zoe, which I know Zoe can be really hard to deal with. But I think uh, listening on kind of what they're talking about earlier, I think they had an answer for the Zoe. So we'll see what they pick up here for the mid laner because that's really all they have left right now. With a Zerath again. Zerath again. All right. Well, we'll certainly see on how uh, all this is going to go. Um... So Nautilus is uh, another champion you might not have seen before. Uh, he has kind of a hook thing where he can like pull somebody in, and he's particularly he's he's really tanky, and uh, probably going to go to their top lane. Most likely, yeah. Um, I have actually seen him go jungle, weirdly enough. Yeah, Nautilus um, is kind of one of those champions where you can kind of put him in a lot of different places and he can be fine. He has very, he has a very well-rounded kit and can kind of do a lot of things. 
I highly recommend anyone uh, who is interested in the whole League of Legends lore is to look up Nautilus's bio as well as listen. He actually has his own theme song um, that was played in one of the cinematic trailers for him, and it is probably the coolest thing, and I highly recommend playing it every time you play Nautilus if you go boot up League of Legends today. Um, very, very terrifying character, but love him. He's, he's just a big sweetheart, I think. Um, so here we're going to go into spectator delay once more. Um, so this is a perfect time to answer any kind of questions that we may receive. Chat, do we have any questions currently up there on the chat? Not quite. Someone uh, liked the comment, respect the new new. Respect the new new. <laughs> Always respect the new new. Or new new, and our Yeti will come for you. Mm hmm. True words have never been spoken. True words have never been spoken. Ever been buried in, by a giant snowball before? I have not. I imagine it's probably a pleasant awesome. experience. Yeah, it's kind of like an, I, I guess it's kind of like an avalanche going down a hill. Yeah, no, I don't want that. I don't want that in my life. Um, so in terms of this whole matchup, what, what are what are your thoughts, Vince? What do you think? Uh, what do you think the play might be? Here? Well, it's a pretty tanky. Uh, it's pretty tanky lineup from Wisconsin. They have the Nautilus, the Brom, and the Warwick can usually build some items that give him some some health and armor. Oh yeah. The Zoe is pretty. Uh, it's pretty squishy. Doesn't have a lot of health, but she also has a lot of defensive abilities. Well, we also have some fairly tanky characters as well. Leona usually, um, yeah. you know, building up on that either match resist or uh, just plain armor, um, as well as the Molkai, uh, just being the beast that he is. He, he usually takes a hybrid tanky ability power build. Yeah, and not sure about Kendrick. Another, another thing about that uh, I've noticed is that Park has a lot of uh, ability damage in their lineup as well. The only really attack damage person they have is Ezreal, and he's he's kind of a hybrid. Like he does, he kind of switches it up. He, he mixes his auto attacks in between his his spells, and right. so um, that kind of implies that you need to get going rolling early because if you if you give them time to build magic resist items, then it can be really hard to get through all of those tanky champions. Right. But and you always have to have the nice balance of between of attack damage and ability power, because if everyone's ability power, well, you just build magic resist, and boom, it's negated. Mm -hmm. and, and the match is pretty much decided already, I think, in those cases. Yeah. But they also do have the Leona and the Maokai, which, if they can get in there, they can do some damage uh, themselves. So they might be trying to look for some more damage-oriented builds on the Leona and the Maokai, as opposed to more tanky builds. Alrighty, about 15 seconds, and then we're going to head into the loading screen. We're going to go ahead and actually uh, mute our microphone for right now, and uh, we will be right back with you once the game is loaded in. Uh, so just sit back and enjoy. All right, go Pirates. Go Pirates. All right, we have returned. Uh, we're right now waiting for the actual uh, delay of them teleporting in from the Summoner's Rift, I want to say. Yeah. I, we really don't know where they come from. They just appear, and they're supposed to fight for our entertainment. So, yay. Well, I know originally, and this is, they, they retconned this, they changed it, but originally it was in place of war, and it would settle disputes, they would have summoners, you know, call forth champions from the past. And that was the League of Legends. Oh, I see. But I think that's not really the story anymore of the game. It's now about a kid on roller skates, apparently, with really long, 
you know, glorious hair to fight people. Yeah, that's that, that would be Zoe. And Zoe from she she's kind of weird. She's got a lot of really weird abilities, but she can be really annoying in the right hands. As can most of these champions. But looks like everybody's just kind of lining up to make sure that there's no invades, make sure nobody gets any kind of sneaky plays off without anybody knowing. And that character is just cool. I'm, I'm just really admiring the yeah. artwork. <laughs> that's Kindred, that's Zerath, and then Zoe. Zerath getting some uh, sweet dance moves in and throwing out some emotes. Very nice, very nice. We have Leona sitting here in the tall grass, and Minions over here we have Ezreal just uh, just watching, making sure that this is all clear. Yeah, I think they're not. I think the other side's going to try anything. They just want to make sure nobody else is trying anything. Yeah, trying which is some early vision up. Uh, you can see two wards in the same bush from both sides. Um, that bush right there is actually called. It got a name. It's called the Pixel Bush, and typically you want to put a ward in it really early on, so that way you can spot the enemy jungle if they're trying to go through the river. Yep, minions have spawned and combat has, well, sort of begun. It's now trying to get the money, get that red over there. Yeah, yep, so both, it up. both junglers have gone for the red buffs this time. Uh, depending on which jungler you're playing, you will start at either the red or the blue. Uh, it just depends on what you're playing and sometimes what your preference is. Uh, junglers usually have like a path that they follow, depending on their character. And they try and find like a spike like they try and find a moment where they can spike as soon as they can they have like a couple of levels they have a really powerful you know spike and uh try and get kills with it or just zone somebody away try and burn a summoner spell as just a yeah, little they... bit of uh yeah just kind of meeting up with the two junglers saying hi to each other and zaroth over here getting some really nice uh poke in on that zoe so definitely chipping down her health quite a bit and it looks like things in bot are just kind of like peaceful to a degree, you know, just getting some minion kills, not doing too much against each other. Um, and then over here in top lane, we have Nautilus, who's really pushing in on the Mokai here. And uh, yeah, well, we'll see where the action really starts up. It looks like uh, Kindred's going to go ahead and try to take the Shuttle Critter here, and Warwick's going to take a peek and realize that it's not really for him right now. Or maybe it is. Yeah, there's gonna, it looks like there's a fight converging here in the river. Kindred coming in and oh. oh, just barely getting away with that flash. We're gonna see if uh, Kindred's trying to get away there. Malachi oh. trying to pick up the kill, unable to Can't do quite so. get it. And the first blood on the Kindred with that ignite. That it, was that was a really uh, that was really close. Yeah, really unfortunate for Park because yeah, it, it's all about you know when you, when you try to cast these spells, there's a large ring in terms of where you can cast it. Oh. And Nautilus uh, just grabbing that Zerath there for a moment. Zoe did a stun, mm -hmm. it looked like. Yep. That was nasty, yeah, but she... falling to turret. Zoe throws out a bubble, well. and it can get a stun off Oh, I when see. that bubble goes out. That's nasty. Yeah. Uh, Zoe can be... She's she's kind of annoying. She's very slippery, a lot of utility, and just, uh, just kind of a pain. And the Braum going in there, he's using his shield to protect the Lucian, while the Lucian tries to get some of his abilities off. Getting a lot of good poke there. Lucian is one of the most aggressive uh, carries in lane uh, that you can play. That's partly why he's so strong right now, is because he's really easy to snowball with. Uh, he can throw out a grenade, and when you hit when you hit somebody with a grenade, if people attack that grenaded target, he gets a lot of movement speed and attack speed. Oh, and Kidra was able to get that uh, shuttle as well, so that's some nice money right there. And, yeah, and, and good vision. Like a part, I think a huge part of getting the scuttle crabs is the the vision that they give you. Yeah, um, it's basically like you get a, a ward that can't be killed in the river. Yeah, and we can actually see up here in the top lane. There's there's quite a bit of wards wards going on here. They have yeah. this pretty much on lockdown. Bot lane, there's maybe one ward there for from Wisconsin, and that's kind of that's kind of it, which is a, a little bit worrying. I think Park really needs to get some of those wards out there, but they're maybe too busy, honestly, fighting these two. Yeah, they're well, the thing is they're pushed so far up that they can't really get out to put wards down. That's true, but I'm also glad that Wisconsin isn't really taking advantage of that as well. Uh, okay, taking in some damage there. Yeah, the the Warwick's actually playing really uh, safe. Now, Warwick usually has his spike, and when he's at his strongest in the early game, is when he gets level 6, because his ultimate is a very long-duration long, range, a long duration stun that uh, 
gives him he basically gets a bunch of free attacks on them. And and right now they actually did spot that Warwick. Uh, not only with the little uh, plant that he hit there to provide some vision, but also you can see now Fark's really putting down some wards and pinging uh, their fellow teammates there to say that hey the Warwick's coming in. So Zerath's a very oh. Not able to escape from the Zoe. Just did some nice just splash damage. I think yeah. uh, she Zoe, doesn't have a roll. Yet. Zoe kind of teleports all over the place and can curve her spells if that's not uh, annoying enough for you. So Zoe is is like you know I okay. So I personally have a very huge uh, distaste for Zoe. I do not like <laughs> her at all. Uh, we we don't like the big H words for. Yeah, it's distaste. <laughs> yes, uh, Zoe has a has a permanent spot in my, in the coldest, darkest depths of my my soul. Oh, Kindred, really pushed up into the enemy's jungle is actually gonna find herself getting caught in between the Warwick and Zoe. Try Zoe doing so much damage. My goodness. Yeah. I can. I think I will now share <laughs> that cold heartedness into my own cold heart. My, wow, that's just. I never expected that. All right, yeah. and bot lane is just kind of at a at a standstill matchup here, which is, I guess, a good thing to be honest. Yeah. So if you look down, I I meant to explain this earlier. There's yellow numbers down by the scoreboard. Those are the creep score, or the or the that's the number of minion kills that they have. So if you look, the Warwick, I mean, sorry, the Ezreal has 36, and Lucian has 55. So Lucian is up on the CS right now. He has more. Minion kills, which means he has more gold. But uh, his lead isn't insurmountable, and it can. Ezreal also has a hard time farming in lane as well. Lucian has a lot easier of a time to farm. Yeah, he'll he'll start to catch up here as they take that on. But I think is Park gonna go for dragon? Yeah, I think they're gonna go for the dragon. But Warwick actually here is trying to chase the Zera as the Leona tries to oh. jump in, can't quite land the hook. Kindred there trying to secure the scuttle real quick yeah, as the Zoe comes... Actually helped our uh, Kindred there in terms of taking the scuttle. Trying to get those kills. Managed to get the Leona as well. Oh. Kindred trying to get that pick off, but he may have gone in Little too far. Little thirsty, yeah. <laughs> as he goes down with the Ignite. Oh, Ezreal taking in some hits, and it looks like and they're going to try to poke it yeah. in, yeah. That was a little bit too strong, so... Yeah, Zoe, they were trying to get that pick off, but didn't quite land it. But they haven't taken the dragon, oddly enough. Uh, they may yeah. be too low a health, or... I think they're a little bit too low, and the Ezreal could actually... Uh, leaving an Ezreal alive while trying to take dragon, especially when everyone's low on health, uh, could mean that it's it's an easy steal for him if, if they're very, very skilled. Yeah, Ezreal... Um, well, Ezreal does so not have his I, ult yet. I'd be careful. Uh, the ult is True. what allows him to get those steals off. His ult has a very, very long range and does a lot of damage. That's true, that's true. So, but it looks like they're going for oh, yeah, it now, they're going actually. for it now. Now the uh, the mountain Drake is probably it's not the worst Drake that they could have. I mean that that you could fight into. I mean let's see. So it it allows them to push a little bit easier, but yeah. that's 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 about it. They do damage to epic monsters and towers as true damage. Uh, why don't you explain true damage a little bit? So there are, so there are very few things that do true damage, but the idea is with true damage it ignores magic resist and armor. So armor reduces the uh, damage that a physical attack does, while magic resist reduces the amount of physical uh, magic attack does. With the uh, Nautilus getting the hook and the Zoe teleporting in and getting the kill on the Zerath, the Zerath is just having a really hard time this game. He's trying. He's, yeah, he's really trying. It's just Zoe. I've never expected Zoe to be that powerful. Yeah, Zoe is. That's catching me off guard. She's very hard to play. She's very hard to pick up. But uh, once you've once you've played her a lot, she you can get a lot done with her. Uh, as you can see, obviously. That Brom, they're trying to zone off the Ezreal, Leona, and Zoe getting a counter ward there. But looks like they might try and do something here. Oh, yep, Brom's ult comes it. out. Lucian's trying to get. Whenever Lucian uses an ability, he gains a double attack instead of a single attack. He gets that kind of double tap going on. And uh, I think it allows him to do a significant amount of damage. Yeah, here comes Kindred to see if uh, As, she can help out. Ezreal just gets, just barely gets out of the way in time. Kindred coming in, trying to do some damage. Gets the shutdown on the nice. Lucian. Going after the Brom now. 
Oh, uh, Grom is just going to, I think, barely escape Oh, here. and oh! the Israel Hulk coming in clutch. Oh, that poor Brom. Chasing He's, him down. He is down. That's a good fight for that Park there. That was a really good fight. All right, and let's, uh, let's oh, check up on the lanes here. Oh, yeah. And Malphite's some... really putting some hurt on that Nautilus. He's yeah. trying to push up. Usually when they're trying to push up like that, it means they're trying to roam or take just take the tower. But uh, yeah, I don't think the Nautilus really can really get much done there. Yeah, Malkai is really doing good. So now I think the next thing, in terms of my opinion, I think Park needs to keep the vision going. Uh, looks like there's been a few uh, counter vision going on down here in the lower parts. Um, and yeah. actually, there's some they, two wards going actually, on right there. If you look on the minimap, there's oh, a yeah. line on the river. Yeah, there is actually a really nice line. The there. red wards, because Park is on the red team, the red wards are Park. And so they have a lot of vision in the river. They can see pretty much anything that goes past the river. Uh oh, Kindred's and not going to get out oh, of there. Yeah. Because he just kind of jumps over the wall there. Oh. Oh my goodness. Barely make. Oh, did not make it away. Uh, I, I'm still astounded. That's so much damage. <laughs> uh, look at Zoe's items. What's, what's yeah, Zoe got? Yeah, let's take a look at Zoe's items. So Zoe's down so here. So Zoe's got. Okay, so Aludin's Echo is what Zoe has. That's one of the best kind of early game snowball items for an ability power champion um because it not only increases your ability power massively but it also kind of gives like a secondary attack on all of your abilities and so that's a huge power it's always kind of hit her her peak she's going to fall off as the game goes on oh i see yeah but for right now she's a really big power player right. on the map right now well, then it's also going to see on if anyone's going to be building any magic defense, which I'm currently not seeing any magic defense going on. We have Makai, who looks like he's building on, well, okay, not really anything. It's mainly just health. Oh, as point. Leona oh. dives in there on the Braum, the Braum uses his ultimate. Leona needs to get out of there. Uses the heal from the Ezreal. Just barely getting away. I think, that, I think that was just more of a get off my tower move right there. Basically, yeah. That's basically what that was. Looks like Toppling Kindred tried to come in and Nautilus took a took a beating, so he's going to fall back for right now. Yeah, so getting a, a champion to fall back isn't exactly as good as getting a kill, but it is also a, a pretty huge advantage because they can't lane to get that golden XP. Ezreal just TPing away from the Warwick. You do not want to be in range of the Warwick because... Oh, Leona jumping in to try and save the Ezreal. Which, it will uh, not go down. Yeah, that was that actually was really good. a good play there. Yeah. It's like uh, she, her, uh, oh man, what's the shield? W, I think, yeah. maybe. Le Leona is a support, and usually with tanky supports like that, their job is to go in and protect their carry. So it's better for the support to die than the carry to die, because the carry needs to keep going, basically. And they will lose their first tower here in bot lane, but that's that's not too bad, honestly, for, for how much Park has actually succeeded in terms of getting their kills and minion kills going. That's oh, not too bad. Zoe is trying to go in on the Zerath here. That's looking kind of scary. I do not blame Zerath for using the flash there. Good good flash there. Yeah. Oh, that's weird. I have a clock at 9. All right, looks like they're trying to set up around the Dragon Pit again. Let's take a look here. Yeah, Warwick just uh, initiating the fight there with Lucian and Braum. They're going to take that dragon pretty easily, I think. Um, there's no wards there for the uh, Ezreal to use his ultimate to try to steal it, so I think it's yeah, pretty they safe. Just, they, they used the, uh, the vision plant and didn't see it fast enough. Yeah. But it looks like they might be able to actually catch somebody oh, off Oh, Leona's guard. going yeah. in. Leona going in full in. bore. Ezreal doing some damage on all three of those champions. Oh, there Zoe, his ultimate. Zoe there kind of nuking the kindred out yeah. they're Ooh, yeah. trying to get away need to do a little bit of a fallback oh, Zara joining the fight as zoe oh zoe oh. gets jumped onto by the leona that was a great hook from leona that was great ezreal hoping for a lucky uh snipe there but didn't quite find it. That was a really good fight. And if, if I remember that was really, that of was... our Leona here, I remember coming back out and she sits down in her chair and says, I'm going to play the crap out of support today. And she's really doing it. She's yeah. keeping to her word right now. She's, I'm, yeah, I'm she's the really making it work today. All right, Kindred taking on some of their wolves here on the enemy team's Trying jungle. Trying to steal their jungle so they can't get as much money. Ooh, catching oh, the catching, Nautilus yeah. off guard. Oh, and getting the hook. And it's 
Oh, yeah. Four versus He's one. done. He's done. He was way out of position there. Yep, and his Park, team. Perk's coming back in it, man. The gold gap is decreasing. They're getting a lot of good pickoffs. I think uh, Wisconsin's getting a little bit a little bit full of themselves. They're kind of trying some riskier plays, and it's just not working. Maybe. Wisconsin does currently lead in quite a bit in terms of mini kills, and looks like Park is actually going to go ahead and take on the Rift Herald here. But oh, we're no. going to get our first big Zoe coming fight. in. And the Warwick ulting the Kindred. Lucian being able to take and down who, Lucian who and who takes the it. the Rift Herald? Ah, oh. ah, oh. just that was a really that was just a, that was a really close kill on that uh, Rift Herald because whoever kills the Rift Herald gets to keep it. So uh, well, if they had killed it, it then dies, they could have well they would have been able to deny it at least. Right, but. So it looks uh, like unfortunately, it looks like there's going to be at least one, maybe two towers going down in the mid lane while they wait for everybody to respawn and kind of come back. Yep, and it's a good time to use it too, especially when the turret's armor is at its current lowest, at least for the first uh, first 15 minutes here. And they're actually going to take down the Rift Herald pretty easily. So, good, get them all off there. And it looks like uh, down here in Botland, we have uh, Nautilus doing a bit of a flank push here. We'll see if he actually gets caught in uh, in Park's jungle. There are no wards. Like. There's no vision out there right there. There is no vision, but we got three. Oh, oh yep. They now there's them. vision. <laughs> As he kind of hooks himself away. Yep. And wasn't able to get over the wall there, so... Or at least oh, that Leona's trying to go in. Got the hook. Nice. Good hook. I don't know if they have enough damage. The Ezreal is coming in. Yep, Ezreal, I think, is going to be able to do enough damage here to the Nautilus. Oh, uh, the return, the, there's some support coming in from uh, Wisconsin here, oh. with the Nautilus just getting away. And they're under towers. So this is not this yeah. is not a great place to be. They not may the want to back off here. Zareth going to be coming into Wisconsin's jungle and here. Probably spot the Lucian yeah. and going to use there's, probably there's that the blast bomb. cone to yep. get out of the way. Get out of there. Yeah. And it looks like they're they're sticking around bot. They don't want to stop this push yet, but they don't want to get uh, cocky. They're trying not to overcommit here, waiting for their minion wave. This is a good push, but Lucian is coming in. They see the Lucian. They have a ward over there, and just kind of throwing out some harass. This tower probably won't go down, and Park backs up. That you know they don't want to probably to probably for the best. And we yeah. see uh, Maokai running into the Zoe here, and Zoe. Doing yeah, some got, significant damage. Got the bubble. Ooh, Monkai's gonna try to challenge. Oh, I see, because we have somebody teleporting in on one of the minions. It's Zareth. Ooh, just yeah. missing her. Gonna and see if we can get the artillery. Lands just, a hit. But just lands one to. hit, but needed about two. I think he needed two to get that yeah, kill. He did need two. Alright, Kindred trying to get away from the Braum and the Lucian. Uh, yeah, looks like she'll, she'll definitely be able to get away from that, and here comes the support. Yeah, the problem with uh, prolonging a fight is your the the team kind of, everybody kind of meets up together, so any numerical advantage you have kind of disappears. All right, looks like we're going to have a four-man four push down here in mid lane while Wisconsin has three. So let's see if Park can use their numbers to, to their advantage here. As minions start to push in on now, them. Now, if you look at the Warwick, the Warwick is and the Braum are both building armor, as opposed to magic resist. So, is there? Are there? I don't know if enough physical damage is coming out from Park to, to justify that. Yeah, I don't. I don't think so either. Um, I mean, the Ezreal is certainly building. He's he's got his uh, his Mana Moon. He's got a Bilgewater Cutlass. Yeah. Those, Last Whisper. It, it's. The Ezreal does have a lot of ability damage, but he, I mean, uh, attack damage, so that, that armor will stop him, but there's also the Zerath and the Kindred you gotta worry about. Right. So, and they're gonna go fight for another Cloud Drake. And they're gonna get it in time. Uh, Park can't really contest it. So, Cloud Drake allows for movement speed. Yes. Tripled when out of combat. That is, that's pretty yeah, they, significant there. They, yeah, so now uh, Wisconsin will be able to kind of rotate in for uh, support a lot faster now. So I think it's right up right now is like 6% movement speed bonus in combat and a uh, they tripled. So 18%. And a big team fight here. Leona ult's going down. Man, everybody's going down. Yeah. <laughs> 
<laughs> it's the, hard to, to really see what's the, going on. Zerath so landing a lot on. of really good yeah, hits. Leona's good chasing him game. down. Doesn't want to let them get away. And Got hooks Nautilus. on the Nautilus. Ezreal picking up kill on Braum. Nautilus taking down Leona. And the Kindred here fighting oh, so close. just we'll barely. We'll see if Maokai can, uh, can avenge here. Yeah, going chasing after Lucian. Oh, Zoe's oh, Zoe, come yeah, back. Zoe's coming yeah. around. This is it. This is a good time to back off here. Yeah. Ooh. Oh, uh, still hit the bubble. What a shot. And uh, yeah, Maokai Lucian... is pretty tanky. No, nope, he still won't be able to get away. That's that was actually a, a very impressive snipe across the wall there by Zoe. Yeah. I, I was not expecting her to have that kind of range. So now I'm terrified of both her range and her damage. Well, what Zoe does is her tel her ultimate allows her to teleport a certain certain short distance, about the same range as a flash, and then teleports back after about a second. So what she'll do is she'll teleport in, throw a spell out, and then teleport back. Nice. Ezreal Ez focusing on that Zoe. Gotta get her out of the picture. But the Lucian goes down as well, and oh, just barely lands the hook. Come on, Leona. Come on, you got, you got this. this. As stun on the Zoe. Oh, Braum is here, oh, though. Oh, man. Mm, that would have been... Oh. That would have been great. Uh, Kindred and Zerath are just now coming into the party on top lane. Uh, weren't quite able to make it in time, and they're going to grab the scuttle down here. Uh, Everyone's kind of just resetting, trying to recover from the fight there. Yeah, we were able to take tower here in top lane, so we got yeah. a bit of a push there. And they, they were really pushing to try and take that bottom tier 2 tower, and they really weren't able to get that. So... Uh, and the goal disadvantage is kind of staying constant, so it's not expanding, it's not decreasing, it's remaining constant. So it's just kind of holding off the game for now, uh, holding off any kind of progression. I think Park actually did come, come out ahead overall in that whole that whole fight there. So Man, I'm sweating. I'm sweating a little bit. Like, I don't know if it's the heat of this room, or is it the, the hype that I'm feeling right now, but... I, it's the I'm hype, sweating. man. Pike's, yeah. Park's, Park's looking pretty good right now. And I know Park, you, particularly, their strengths lie in the end game, in their decision making, in their their team fight ability. Um, in the end game, it kind of boils down to these massive five v five fights. These they're very high stake fights, and Park excels in that arena. So if we can get to the late game, Azareth, the Zoe picks off the Zareth once again. Yeah, I, I definitely don't want to be in a one v one right now with that Zoe. At least not right now. Yeah. No, she, she will fall she's, off she's, yeah. eventually, but it'll take a while. Looks like they're actually going to go for Baron here. Yeah. Do, does Park... I don't think Park has any vision of it. They may no. not know what's going on. Yeah, they don't They don't know yeah, what's going on. Yeah, nobody's moving in. Maokai's going to come over here, though. Might be able to check it out. We'll see. No, I don't think so. Yep. So they're going to be able to pick up Baron here. Um, we'll see if that's going to give them the edge that uh, Wisconsin needs to to start pushing in. But Park is now going to start focusing down. Uh, bot, take out this Nautilus, I think. Yeah, they're definitely going to be able yeah. to take out Nautilus. So let's see if they can actually get that bottom tower as uh, blue team Wisconsin here splits up a bit. So a group push is definitely needed right now. Like more, more team play kills and pushing on some of these towers is definitely what they need. Yeah. See, that's what I was talking about earlier. That, that Zoe kind of teleports in. And, yeah. And so it looks like she has a lot larger range than she really does because she'll teleport in for that short period of time and just get that one spell off. Are you sure it's not just the speed of her skates? It feels like it sometimes. Yeah. And there, yep, that's wow. the Zoe right now. We're about, we're about to, to call it out, but it's it's pretty fast. And that, Zoe's Zoe is, is pretty, pretty fed. She's got a, a huge advantage, and she's just trying to prolong that advantage as long as she can. And the Zerath is a—he's an artillery mage. They're kind of supposed to be in the back line, and once they start taking damage, they don't really hold up for very long. So, real quick, while things are kind of—well, all right, never mind. They, I was going to say nothing is going to be happening for the next minute, but it looks like we're about to get yet another fight going. But the Zoe is kind of going the in there. Her, she kind of used her whole com combo. She doesn't really have much left over, yeah. and the exhaust has come out, which reduces her damage and her speed, and she will go down. That's a huge pick off for Park. Yeah, and I think that was about, what, a thousand gold mm -hmm. for her death? Um, and she's still probably got a bounty on her. Yeah, she's still got a 500 gold bounty on her. Yeah, even so still. significant amount of gold right there. Um, Chad, do we have any questions currently? Well, things are a little bit not too crazy. Um, I haven't seen any questions so far, but that's pretty active. Chat is active. Dude, oh, yeah. that's what I like to see, man. I always, dude, guys, cheer, yeah. cheer for Park. 
please. Yeah, Park needs Go your pirates, energy. Man. They, give they give Park your energy, energy right, right now. now. They need the hype. All right, there's some dewarding going on for Park there, but oh, they're not going to punish them because yeah. they're going to use the blast cone to get away. Yep, that's very good. Dewarding is extremely risky because you'll see them as they're killing your ward. Right. So, so you got to you got to be mindful of what your opponents are doing. Oh, and we're going to try to catch off the Nautilus again. Uh, by uses himself. his flash, which is at this stage in the game, this late in the game, that flash could be huge. But they're probably going to try and stop this push in here mid. Yeah, inhibitor is a little bit important right now for yeah. uh, for both Park and Wisconsin as they're going to try to fight over it. Zareth is very uh, very squishy, so they're going to definitely dive him in for that. As the Leona jumps in, uses her ult, and goes down. The Mal Malkai ult. Did not manage to root anybody because of the Braum protecting them and the Lucian getting out of the way. Kindred, Kindred just, just surviving, oh, I think. Oh, does not make it away. That was actually a pretty good flash by Braum there. Yeah. And Malkai's going to go down as well. Uh, Zoe, I think, was doing a... You know, both Zoe and Lucian are both their powerhouse damage dealers yeah. for Wisconsin. Yeah, they, they, wasn't really, they weren't really able to... Oh, Wisconsin's definitely going to try to go in for the kill here on the win. Um, yeah. And that is currently game. What an exciting match. That was, we saw a lot of great team plays there. Good board placement. Mm -hmm. It That was actually really, really exciting. Good yeah. game. Good Unfortunately, game. they managed to kind of snipe the, the win there at the end. But that was a, that was, that was a lot closer than, uh, than their last couple of games have been. So, All right. Well, whew. Uh, I'm going to need to get some water, I think. This is this has been really good. Um, we'll, uh, we'll stick around here as, uh, as we're ending the stream, as uh, that is currently it for today. Um, so we'll go ahead and play some music, and uh, then we'll, we'll stop it to then answer some questions. If any of you guys have any, um, what, a, what a good match. Thank you all for being here. Let's, uh, let's go ahead and send into stream ending mode.
Alrighty, guys. Chat. They they feel your energy. They they are loving it right now. Very very exciting match. Um, just want to thank everyone again for for being here and witnessing this very exciting match. Um, feel free to hit that subscribe button over there in the bottom right. We will soon be moving on to Twitch. Um, as soon as we have uh, an answer in for that, we'll uh, just keep an eye on the links and stuff like that on, on park.edu as well as our social media accounts. And uh, we'll, we'll let you guys know. So thank you all for being here. I hope that you all enjoy your weekend. It is Friday, so definitely do and make the most of it. Uh, GG, go Pirates, and... Have a good one.